pursuit of purpose. Your purpose. Is it established? Are you clear in your heart? Why are you into this thing? Are you clear in your heart? It is possible not to know. If you don't know, it's not a sin. For example, some of you, you, you may be married to a pastor. When you were marrying him, you didn't think he was going to be a pastor. Then he became a pastor. Now you are in a dilemma because you didn't marry a pastor. He became a pastor. Now his life is looking changed. All the plans that you had are not going in the same direction. You, the, 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 the image you had of your family, all the holidays you were supposed to be taking. <laughs> All the family meetings you wanted to have. <laughs> you can't believe they are gone. Every time church, church, church. <laughs> Where is our family? Where is our family? The children cannot see you. I can't even see you. <laughs> Listen, let me talk to you. Listen and be wise. Do you prefer him dead? Make up your mind. Do you want him dead? Because if he's dead, you won't have him. He'll be gone. Then you can really be free. I don't mind if he dies. Ah, there you go. How selfish you are. How selfish you are. Don't you understand? There's a greater thing to live for. You've got to learn to live for something bigger than yourself. You've got to live for something bigger than yourself. At the beginning, you may not know it. But if you are patient, if you are patient, one day, the Lord will talk to you too. I remember this your husband said something. She said she was on the same bed with her husband when they were just a young couple. So on the same bed with him. When Jesus appeared to him, he went and talked with Jesus. So she said, Lord Jesus, tears said you appeared to him. Why didn't you appear to me too? We're married. He was changed. He said, the moment he came out of the room, I knew something had happened to him. This is our own story. I heard it from her. She said, the moment... He came out of the room. I knew something had happened to you. He said he was changed. His desires were changed. Everything about him changed. He said, but I, my problem started. He said, I was wondering, so where's my place? So who am I? Tear has found his purpose. What is my purpose? Then she discovered something. Because she said, Jesus, you have to appear to me too. But Jesus didn't appear to her until 30 years later. So she said, in the meantime, what was I doing? She said, I learned something. I discovered whatever God said to Teal, he said to me. Because if he said it to him, what I had to do was to accept that instruction as coming to both of us. Then I said, show me how to do it. So T.L. showed her how to do it. She learned from him and began to, because it took 30 years before Jesus would appear to her. In the meantime, what are you going to be doing? 
30 years later, Jesus appeared to her. By then, all her youthfulness had gone. Do you understand? She was now calm. <laughs> but you know when, you, when you're young, you're like, I can't understand. Mm, mm. <laughs> it's worship time. Your husband is going like this on the platform. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> because you are thinking, you're thinking, you're thinking. After this place now, what next? Your life is just, what next? What next? What next? I'm just following you to church. What next? We're going to church every Sunday. What next? What next? Where is my life? This complaint will not take you anywhere. You can complain like this 30 years, like that woman. 30 years, Jesus kept quiet. Appeared later, 30 years. And didn't even apologize. <laughs> he didn't apologize. He just continued business as usual. Just appeared, appeared to her as if he had been appearing since. He didn't say, I'm sorry, I'm 30 years late. <laughs> Just gave her further instructions. No apologies. Listen. Decide to make your home a happy place. Okay? Make it a happy place by choice. It's got to be by choice. If you want to make it a sad place, you will make it a sad place for yourself. And you know what? You'll be the one who is living in that home. You destroyed your home. Don't destroy your home. Don't act crazy. Are you hearing me? Don't act crazy. Don't. Do the right thing. Do the wise thing. And the good thing for you is that you can listen to me while I'm talking to you. So it works for you. So it works for you. Because if, if a man or a woman is truly called of God, he's the only one that can destroy himself if he does the wrong thing. But if he doesn't, no lie on earth can destroy him. No false accusations can destroy him. Those are not a problem. False accusations don't trouble me because they, don't, they have no power. Don't destroy your home. Don't destroy your home. It is very difficult for a pastor to preach. That's why I'm helping you. Because it is hard for you to preach this message in your home. How do you tell your husband or your wife that uh, this is what the Bible says? They think you are defending yourself. So it's very hard. So oftentimes it takes someone else that both of them can listen to and tell them the truth. But only the humble one will listen. If both are humble, they will listen. If there is no humility there, they will not listen. Then at the end you feel so terrible because you didn't listen when you should have listened. Wisdom is a defense. Yeah. All right? And then do something for yourself. Do something for yourself. As long as you criticize each other, it will be difficult for you to pray together. Because you are critics of each other. So when it's time to pray, this one goes to that room to pray. The other one is walking to the other side to go and pray. They are both going to talk to the same God. Because they are critics of each other. They don't like what each other is doing. That should stop. Do you hear me? That should stop. Don't be critics of each other. Don't be critics of each other. You are helpers of each other. Helpers, not critics. If you are helpers of each other, you'll be so happy to say to the other, let's pray. And you both pray. And you both know what the Lord is saying. And you both be... Why is it that people are more united when they are... When they are... Um, when they are fighting someone? <laughs> They're very united. 
For example, if they're fighting the church, they're very united. The two people that you can't put together in one room. Once it's a criticism against someone, uh -huh, I said that chief usher is a madman. <laughs> that, then the other one is coming from that. They are both in agreement for the time being because they have someone they both don't like. Then after in unity, they destroy him. They will still fight themselves. <laughs> because in heart, they are not united. Don't be critics of each other. Be helpers of each other. That's what you married for. Are you hearing me? You married to help each other. That's what you said you wanted to do. That's what you said. So help each other's faith. That's number one. Help each other's faith to grow in the Lord. Don't allow the other come home criticizing what he should not be criticizing. Save him from death. And you save your wife from death. Have you heard what I said? Very important. Be wise. Tell somebody, be wise. Wisdom is a defense. Defense. Yes. Start praying together. Start praying together. Even from tonight. Even from tonight. Start praying together. It may not be all the time that you pray together, but you, you should have times of prayer. Did you hear me? Yes. Fix it. Plan it. Fix it. If you fix it, it will work. Fix it. Plan the time that it is possible. All right? Not the time that you know None of you be available. <laughs> Plan a possible one. Possible one. You'd be amazed how you become a good team in the house of God, doing big things for the Lord. Yeah. Instead of striving against each other. Sing Aramayana Mondolomodomo. Correct him, Lord. Correct him, Lord. He's annoying me, oh God. He's annoying me. Oh, this is not the life I want. Then she, he too, oh, Spirit of God, descend on my wife. <laughs> If the Lord descends on her, it won't be in your interest. So there'll be peace in your home. Shout amen. I said there'll be peace in your home. Love and joy in your home. That's what it should be. Hallelujah. Then you see the children. The children. The children are excited. Happy. And they spy. They can see that you're praying. And you know what kids do? When they see you praying. They're praying too. They're learning it from you. But when they don't, you don't pray. They don't see you praying. Then you say, prayer time. They say, <laughs> then they are offended. Mm. <laughs> because they think you've taken something from them. All their excitement is gone because you say it's prayer time. It's just prayer time. Huh? <laughs> but when they see you praying and happy, their knees too. They too, they don't know what you're saying. They go, la, 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 la. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. Train up a child in the way he should go. And when he's old, he will not depart from it. Glory to Jesus. Amen. And pastors also should pray. Say, pray. Let them see you praying. All right? In the church. Learn to pray in church. When you're praying, because they learn how to pray from how we pray. You'd be amazed. Most people didn't pray before they came to Christ. They didn't know how to pray. So, but when they come among us, they see us praying. 
They may stand before someone or behind or beside someone and they see the person praying in a certain way. They don't know whether that is right or not until the pastor comes out. The words chosen by the pastor in prayer. So the pastor should pray. Let them hear you praying. Let them see you praying. They will start learning how to pray from the prayer that you pray. In fact, some of them might even be impacted by your tongues. You'd be amazed. I get surprised when I hear some people speak some real strange tongues that are so strange. I wonder where have they been? You know, because it's just so... Away and... Not bad, to be sure, okay? It doesn't have to sound like yours. Do you understand? But somehow, you just wonder, has it been among us? I mean, if you're twinking, 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 you would want to hear him a little more, like, dear Jesus, is that real? I mean, the way you even reacted shows you haven't heard that kind of thing before, and you're going to find it strange. But who knows? Who knows? Might just be. Might just be. I mean, if you if you are if you if you are German or you are English and you listen to the Chinese, you (laughs) you don't know if they are actually communicating. (laughs) Right? But that's how they think about you. (laughs) They wonder if you are communicating. So in the spirit, we have these myriads of languages given to us to speak. Hallelujah. (laughs) But it's important that in the church, the pastor does take the lead in prayer so they know how to pray. They learn from you the words of prayer. They know how we address God. Okay? Oh, Father! Mm. <laughs> do it, Lord! <laughs> Father, I give you three days to do it. Three days! I mean, I, I've heard people literally on television. I've seen it. When ministers are praying like that. And sometimes I wonder. Is he talking to God? (laughs) Father, you have three days. In three days! (laughs) Please don't pray like that. All right? Our father is a real father. He's not a computer. He's a rational being. He can like something and he can dislike something. (laughs) Learn from Jesus. How did Jesus pray? He spoke with such humility, respect. His words were carefully chosen. Father, I thank you that you have heard me. Pray like him. Paul prayed. You you read his epistles, you can see how he prayed. Copy him. Copy him. Learn from the scriptures. The Bible is clear. In the last days, the Bible tells us that there will be so much deception. And that he says that false. It talks about false teachers. The Bible tells us about false teachers, false prophets, and false brethren. Three groups. False teachers, false prophets, false brethren. And it tells us the different things that these groups are into and what they will do in the last days. Don't be misled. 
Use the scriptures to guide your mind. Use the scriptures. And that's why when we teach, we want you to go into the Bible and research those things for yourself. So you can understand them even better. Because we're living in the days of great deception. The Bible says that even the elect could be deceived. So you have to be very wise. Search the scriptures. Be hungry for the word. And don't ever let it push you into the wrong thing. And don't find yourself running from one place to another. Looking for something. Hallelujah. The power and pursuit of purpose.